Hey, good to see ya. We've got a cracking song today. We've got uh, Toxicity, System of a Down, John Domain on drums. Uh, it's been about a year since my first and only tutorial, so I thought it was probably best to get back on it. Um, haven't been doing nothing for the last year. I've been actually building this place. Um, I'll give you a quick little view. My uh, purpose-built drum studio. There's Emerald looking sexy as can be. Rage Against the Machine poster, standard. And the uh, teaching drum kit right here, still holding its own. But anyway, enough about that. Let's get on with the track. We've got uh, loads of drum fills to get through. A lot of drum fills to get through. Uh, I'm going to teach you all of them beat by beat, note by note, so hopefully you can get them all right. Little bit of a tricky thing with this song. John Domain is a left-handed drummer on a right-handed kit, which I didn't realise until I started looking at the drums only track and realised that some of his uh, tom orchestrations were a little bit confusing. Um, checked out some YouTube videos, some live stuff, and he does tend to leave with his left hand a lot, but it opens up some really cool possibilities. So we'll be teaching all those as well. I've just got to set a few things up and we can get to it. See you shortly. Right, so a uh, few moments setting up turned into a couple of hours. Uh, my GoPro stopped working, which was great. Uh, that's all fixed now, so it's filming the bass drum, which you can see hopefully up there. And uh, a couple of things before we start. I've got a free PDF for you on jukegroups.com. Just check the blog, search toxicity or system of a down, it will pop up. Uh, just feel free to download that. Uh, any comments or um, questions always welcome, I'll do my best to answer them, just drop them down below. And also in the description you'll find all the chapter markers for the song, so if you need a specific bit you're looking for, feel free to skip right to it. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so, brief description of the song, we've got a chorus made out of a lot of drum fills, we've got some nice groove work in the verses, a mid late breakdown when we move on to the crash and start hammering out some notes, um, back to a chorus at the end, and a very simplistic outro, basically. Um, the song is, I've decided to put the song in 6-8, it's actually a kind of a combination of 6-8, 12-8 and 4-4, four, four. Uh, but I find as far as teaching and counting this song, it's a lot easier just to count in terms of 6. As I mentioned in the intro, uh, he's going to be leading with his left hand every now and again. So where a drummer right-handed on a right-handed kit would be going uh, right, left, right, left, right, left. Where the right hand will be changing drum on the beat, or at least on the eighth notes. Um, he's often starting with his left hand, but he's still changing with his right, so that's now moving on the off beats. So we get a lot of sets of like one or three up here and a lot of just single notes down the floor to rather than two to end it. Uh, not all the fills are like this, but some of them, but like I said, it's, uh, it opens up some really nice, interesting ideas, so uh, we're gonna keep it to that. Also, uh, I'm gonna be playing this song on a four-piece kit. This is a really popular tune for drummers, probably because of a lot of the fills, and it's just a great song. Um, so we're gonna be using a uh, four-piece so that hopefully anybody can play this because I think generally speaking everyone's got a couple of toms. John Domain tends to use, I think, um, a couple of racks, a couple of floors, a gazillion cymbals. Um, so all I've done is orchestrated it on two toms. It doesn't lose anything from the track whatsoever and the fills are still incorporating the same kind of orchestrations around the kit. We're just moving through less toms basically. The snares are still in the same place so if you do have a bigger kit and you want to turn it round to that, leave the snares where they are and where you see more than, if you ever see three on a rack tom, that would be where you can move a couple to another drum and move around like that. Intro! Nothing to do here whatsoever, it's all on the guitar. So uh, that's going to be four bars of one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, and then we're going to go into chorus one. Right, the chorus has got an A-B structure. We have a group of fills in section A, and we've got a groove in section B. Now, if we split section A into the, for the two parts, we've got A1 and A2. A1 is going to stay pretty much the same throughout. A2 is going to change. So, what I thought I'd do first, I'm going to teach you the A1 part, and I'm going to teach you the B part. And then every time we click on a chorus down below in the links, you're going to get all the fill variations that go along with it, unless there are any specific changes, in which case I'll mention those as well. So, the A1 part is going to sound like this. If we slow that down and get some counting involved, we have one, two, and three, and four, five, six. So we've got all flams on the snare, crash on the one, 
and these offbeat kick ideas. One and two and three and four, five, six. That's going to appear in uh, the first, second and fourth lines of every chorus, apart from the very final one in the first line, which we'll get to later. Right, the B part, we've got the groove that's going to follow all of these fills throughout the song. Uh, these also stay pretty much the same apart from the final line of the chorus where he's going to bring a fill in to bring the next part of the song in. It's going to go like this. One, two and three and four, five and six. One, two and three and four, five, six. So we split those two bars up. The first bar, we've got a ghost note on the first snare drum that we play. One, two and. One, two and. The rest of that bar. One, two and three and four. Five and six. One more time. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. Which brings us into our second bar of section B, which is going to go one, two, and three, and four, five, six. So right from the beginning, nice and slow with the counts. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. One, two, and three, and four, five, six. The only ghost note in that on the snare is that very first one of the first bar. Right. Now that that's dealt with, those are going to be the same throughout the entire song, unless otherwise stated. I think it just changes very slightly on the... Uh, it changes very slightly on the last chorus coming out of the mid-late, and the last line of every chorus, uh, there's going to be a fill coming out of that groove. So, let's get on to the chorus variations, the fun bits. Right, beginning this frenzy of fills, we have uh, the first one, as said in the intro, we're going to start with the left hand. Right, so a lot of writing drummers may not be used to starting with the left hand on fills. Uh, it's not something I do regularly, uh, but it does open some nice possibilities in our Right, so the fill is going to go like this. One and two and three and four and five and six. So, breaking that down a little bit, we've got a kick drum under the first one. It's going to be a very common thing throughout most of the choruses as well. It just gives it a little bit of an oomph to set off the drum fill. One and two and three and. So again, beginning with the left. One and two and three and. Followed by a single stroke roll, 30 second notes. Four and five and six and. So a little bit quicker. which goes back into the groove. Fill number two. Fill number two, we've got, uh, starting on our right hand, back to what we know. Uh, it's a little bit simpler with this one, no single stroke rolls. We've just got single strokes, we're gonna orchestrate around the drums. They're gonna go like this. One and two and three and four and five and six. One and two and three and four and five and six. Don't forget that kick under the first uh, floor tom as well. Okay, for number three, this is where things change a little bit. We haven't got our A section divided into two. We're going to take up that entire section with drum fills. And these are very similar throughout the chorus, except for this very first one where we are going to go straight to the rap tom off of the crash cymbal rather than to the snare drum off the crash cymbal, but that's the only difference to the rest of the time that this comes in. So it's going to go like this. One and two and three. Now that's intentional, you're going to have a double stroke on the 6th hand down here because what John DeMine decides to do is lead with the left hand in the 2nd section. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and... So slowly... 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and... 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and... A little bit quicker... Feels awesome going around like that. Really weird. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and crash. Fill number four. This time we're going back to our left hand. 
No, we're not. This time we're staying on our right hand and a little bit simpler. We're going to go one and two and three and four and five and six and three. So that's one and two and three and four and five and six and three. Again, kick drum under the snare. I may forget to say it sometimes, but uh, it is there. That's going to bring us into our final groove section, which is going to change at the end, and that fill, if I can get my music up properly, is going to be like this. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and... Let's break this down. So the, uh, the first bar is the same as the rest of them. One, two, and three, and... The second bar is where it changes and it goes one, two, and three, and four. That's one, two, and three, and four. Ah! One, two, and three, and four. Five, and six, and so that's a left, right, left, right. Five, and six, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Five, and six, one, two, and three, and four. Five, and six, and four. That brings us nicely onto verse one. Let's do verse one. Right, verse one, really cool little groove here. Uh, we're gonna close the hi-hat right up, bring everything down a little bit. And then we've got uh, ghost notes on the snare to contend with. Uh, the basic structure of this, the main template that the first one uses, not verse two, just verse one. Uh, it's gonna go one and two and three and four, five and six. That's just the first bar, got two ghost notes there. One and two and. One and two and three and four, five and six. Followed by uh, the next two bars, which are the same thing, but with only one ghost note. One, two and three and four, five and six. One, two and three and four, five and six. Followed by the final bar, which has a nice little drag in it. This is not a buzz roll or a buzz drag. If you can't do drags properly yet, learn how to. <laughs> I'll probably get like a video of this later on, uh, but it's the difference between just burying the stick into the drum and letting two very specific strokes happen. When I do this, I'm just dropping the stick down on the one and I'm just snapping my fingers back up. So it's kind of going boom, bang. Like that, enough of my drags. Right, so that last bar is one, two, and three, and four, five, and six. Loud accent on the snare at the end. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. So that whole template. One, and two, and three, and four, five, and six. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. We're going to use this for most of the lines. Now, the variations come in uh, when we first start the verse off. Remember, we're coming out of that drum fill from the chorus, once you've hit that crash, we're not gonna put in both uh, ghost notes, it's gonna be the same as bars two and three. So we're gonna go, one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and play that line out. We've then got, uh, so that line, the second line, the third line, the fourth line, or the main template, uh, which brings us into the bridge one. Bridge one is exactly the same as verse one, uh, which can hit a splash. So splash, uh, with two ghost notes. And I'm going to play that line out as usual, drag, accent. Um, the second line is going to be the same as the rest of them. When we get to the final bar of the uh, second line of the bridge, we're going to go one, two, and three, and four, five, six. So I call back to the end of the chorus lines. So that's one, two, and three, and open the one, two, and three, and four, five, six. Which is going to bring us nicely into chorus two. Just as a note to the people that uh, can't quite learn the drags quickly. Um, well, not learn them quickly, because anything worth learning is taking time over, right? But uh, the drags. If you can't play the drags yet, by all means stick a buzz roll in. It shouldn't ruin your experience of playing the song. All I'm recommending is that Try and learn your drag strokes. It makes a big difference. 
It just sounds cleaner like that. Uh, but yeah, try to learn them. It won't ruin the song if you put a buzz stroke in, but it, you are better off with those double strokes. Chorus 2. More of the same from this one. Uh, same structure as the first one. We're going to have that A1, A2 split and part B. Uh, part B is the same apart from the last fill, which we'll go into detail after the variations. And uh, A1 is the same. We still got. So, fill number one. One and two and three and four and five and six. That'll be quicker. Right, fill number two. Starts the same, but we're going to leave with the left hand. A uh, little bit of a disclaimer on fill number two. This is what I can hear on the drums only track, which is the one I've referenced. I think someone got it from uh, like Rock Band or Guitar Hero or something, you can find it on YouTube, uh, which revealed a lot of stuff that he was doing. Now, my brain says that this is correct. My heart doesn't. However, I've stuck it in anyway because even if it's not right, it's still really cool. Okay? Uh, if anyone's got a better idea of this, Feel free, let me to explain. It starts off exactly the same, however, we're starting with the left hand. We still got one, and two, and three, and. Instead, we've got one, and, two, and three, and. Still with a kick. Uh, one, and two, and three, and. The four, and five, and six, and I'm hearing four, and five, and six, and. I can hear a tom under there. Now, it might be just something that's ringing from the previous drum. Uh, but it really does sound like another Tom hit to me, so if you've got any better ideas, please let me know. So it's going to go like this. One and two and three and four and five and six and... Alright, slow tempo, that's quite nice to do. Uh, what we've got to do is pass our right hand from here, straight down here, at a fast tempo. One and two and three and four and... And hit a double on here, so it's going to sound like this. So yeah, really cool fill. Um, learn to pass double strokes between two drums. Never a bad thing to learn to do that. And like I say, my brain says this is right, my heart says it doesn't, because it's kind of a weird fill to put in a rock song, but that's what you're getting. Fill number three. Same thing as before, we're gonna take that A1, A2 split and bin it, and we're gonna go around the drums, but like I was saying, we're gonna go to the snare drum rather than the racks, uh, we're gonna go to the snare drum rather than the rack tom like we were in the first chorus. Remember that double with the right. One and two and three and four and five and six and two. So exactly the same as the one before. I love how that sounds. Just leading with the left. Oh, whoops. Just leading with the left on your. Uh, when you go around the toms, you just don't get that standard. Blah, 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 blah. Sounds all strange. Anyway, I digress. Right, so we've got, um, what are we on now? Fill number four. Fill number four, we have a similar idea to the very first one of the song, actually. So we're gonna have left with the kick. One and two and three and. Followed by a single stroke roll. Four and five and six and. One and two and three and four and five and six and. A little bit faster. which brings us back into uh, our B groove. And yeah, we're back, fantastic. Right, um, my camera just cut out, which was kind of infuriating. Uh, I got down to about the uh, second chorus. No, what did I get down to? I know, we got, we left off at the second chorus. We left on that final fill. I actually got that into the last bit of the last chorus, of uh, the next chorus, uh, so best do that all again. Right, final line of the chorus goes like this. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and. So it's very similar to the very first chorus, which was going uh, five, and six, and. But this time we go five. the second verse which we will now do again or I'll do again you'll see it for the first time verse 
do. So this time around, we are simplifying a lot of this. We're going to take out the double ghost note for the most part. The one, two, and uh, we're going to take out. One. So we're going to go one and two and three and four, five and six. Rather than that, we're going to go one, two, and three and four, five and six. For most of the bars, unless otherwise stated. So one, two, and three, and four, five, and six. We're going to have four bars of the first line. Two bars of the second line, and then we're going to do kind of this callback idea to the first verse, which I really like. This is awesome. We're going to do uh, the uh, explain. This is the fourth bar of every line, followed by the first bar of most lines of the first one. So the fourth bar being one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and with that drag back. And then we've got the double ghost note one, and two, and three, and four, five, and six to finish off that full second line. So the second line as a whole is going to sound like this. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. One, and two, and three, and four, five, and six. Just like that. Followed by a splash, which is going to be the beginning of the third line. Straight back to the usual template. I'm going to play that all the way through to the end of the verse where we've got a slight variation on the last bar before the bridge and that's going to go one two and three and four open high out on the four one two and three and four five drag six one two and three and four five and six now that sounds nice and open that symbol sounds nice and open on that beat five Oh, on that beat four. That symbol sounds nice and open on beat four. When we play it up to speed, it's going to sound more like a choke. So it's going to go like this. One, two, and three. And four. Going into the bridge, we've got a no splash symbol this time. We've already used it in the verse. And we're going to bring that double drag idea on the first bar. One, and two, and three, and four, five, and six. So coming out of the previous line. One, two, and three. Then we're going to play our standard template all the way through, ending with the standard ending on the verses. Four, five, six. One, two, and three. Four, five, six. Which will bring us into chorus number three. The first two fill variations on this chorus, obviously A1 being the same and text B being the same. The first two fills are the same, which is um, strange in this song, but kind of nice because there's one less fill to remember. So they're going to start with the left hand with a kick. Boom. One and two and three and four and five and six and a little bit faster. One and two and three and four and five and six. That's like I say, fills one and two, bring us on to fill three. Same as chorus two. Again, moving straight to the snare from the crash rather than the rack in first one, in chorus one, sorry. Fill four is going to involve some double stroke rolls. Rather than the single stroke, we're gonna get double strokes instead. Like I said with the drags, if your double strokes aren't quite up to scratch, um, you can kind of do that bounce where people will release their kind of grip to get what I call very lazy double stroke rolls. It's not a deal breaker, you can still get through the song, but actual double strokes where the first shot is with the wrist and the second shot with the fingers. Boom, boom. There's a difference between them sounding like this and sounding like that. Anyway, the film. So we're going to start with our left hand. Which uh, brings us into our standard ending. No, it doesn't. Which, excuse me, which brings us into our section B uh, groove of the chorus. One, two, and three, and four, five, and six. One, two, and three, and four, five, six. But 
we have a variation on the end rather than the or the we've got uh, just our standard ending going into a chorus. One, two, three, and four, five, six, crash for the middle eight. The middle eight or the breakdown. We've got um, two sections to this, A and a B. A is going to go like this. And B is going to go like this. Okay, so the A section, the easier section, we've got four bars of this to begin with. Uh, sorry, this is after the four bar rest. One, two, one, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, three, four, five, six. So the snare is always on the ands and we're just caning away at the crash cymbal. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. Well, four bars of that, followed by four bars of the section B, which is uh, just slightly similar for beats four, five, six. One, two, and three, exactly the same. Four, five, and six. Or four, five, and six. So we got crash and kick on the four, just the kick on beat five, and we're gonna hit a crash and a snare on the end. Ideally a different crash, but you can still get away with the same one. One, two, and three, four, five, and six. The important thing is that the and of five is being accented. And we go back into another four bars of section A. Which brings us into chorus four. The final chorus. There's something a little bit different for this one. Rather than the usual... We're going to have, uh, yeah, something a bit different. It's going to sound like this. It's kind of like a real cool uh, just climax coming out of the, uh, the middle eight. Love it. So um, for this one, the count is obviously a little bit different. One and two and three and four and five and six. One and two and three and four and five and six. Followed by our first fill. One and two and three and four and five and six. So we've got a double straight roll on there again rather than the single straight rolls. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. Four and five and six and. So all the way through. Into our standard B um, template. Coming out of the middle late, that's going to sound like this. Uh, then we're going to go back into our standard A1 section. I don't know why I'm singing along on the drum set. I have a drum set to make the noise. So we got uh, fill number two. We're going to start with our left hand and we're going to get some double stroke rolls in there again. to our groove and fill number three standard going into the snare followed by the final fill of the final chorus which is going to be a left hand lead and it's going to go one and two and three and four and five and six and kind of similar to the first one in this uh, sorry the second one in this chorus uh, just less snare drums sorry just less floor uh, <laughs> just less rack toms one of them. One and two and three and four and five and six and. Again, double straight roll. No buzzing. Damn it, I forgot. The kick drum is under all of these fills. On the first note, standard, whole song. And as I did actually forget to mention it on this chorus, the kick drum 
might have forgotten to mention this in the previous course as well. The kick drum does come under the first note, regardless of what it is. Into our final B section of the chorus, uh, which is the same ending as the one going into mid late. And that's going to get us to our outro. The outro sounds very, very similar to section A in the middle eight. However, do not be fooled, it is not. We've still got this idea of one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. But this time we're going to bring a little bit more feel to the groove and we're going to stick ghost notes on the snare in all the gaps. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two. One of the benefits of having a drums only track for this really, because I couldn't hear these at all in the main thing. Um, and why would you be able to hear them? Because everyone's just going wild at this point. Quick note on ghost notes when you're doing stuff like that. Make sure the ghost notes are really close to the snare drum. You're looking at certainly no more than two inches away, more like one inch, and you're just kind of just dropping the stick. You don't need to put any pressure. You certainly don't need to pull up first throw it down, that's for your accent nose. Brings us to our last bar, the final one of the song. We've made it. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six. So we just got kind of a four-four feel to this one. Apart from the last bit, which was sound like it's in triplets, but because we're counting it in 6 8, they're just 16th notes. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, 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 and Really cool ways of getting around the drum kit. I highly advise you to learn it this way. I found that I was actually teaching this wrong for many years because I was just doing the right-handed variations and always going around like this, which sounds great. I've played it live like that before. It still works. I've never had any complaints. Um, but if you want to get it right, if you want to really kind of challenge yourselves and do something a bit different, this is how you play it. As I said before, right at the beginning, any questions, comments, feel free to pop them below. Um, there's a free download of this PDF, full transcription of the song at jukegroups.com. Just look at the blog. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Hope you've had fun. I'll see you next time. Catch you later.